Welcome to another Animal of the Week. Today we are taking a look at the spider-tailed horned viper, a species of viper that many of you may recognise from the David Attenborough documentary Seven Worlds, One Planet. If you do recognise it, then you already know what makes this snake so special and interesting, but I will get to that later. The species is actually a very new discovery, and was only first described in 2006. The first specimen of the species was however collected in 1968, but was wrongly identified to be a similar looking snake species, the Persian horned viper, as it seems they missed the spider-like tail that makes this species so distinct. It's a member of the family Viperidae, making it a true viper, and also making it very venomous, so don't approach it if you ever see one in the wild, though I doubt many ever will. The reason I doubt many people will ever see this snake in the wild is due to its habitat. Not only does it have a very small range, being found in just one small corner of Iran, but also because that one small corner of Iran is covered in tall, arid, mountainous desert. This is, however, perfect for this snake. Being a snake means it's cold-blooded, and so it needs a lot of sunlight in order to survive. The remoteness of this habitat is what led to the species only being properly described in 2006. The mountains do, however, provide the snake with the perfect habitat to implement the very specific and ingenious hunting method. These vipers eat birds. Now you may be wondering how on earth this viper could catch, let alone eat a bird, but this is where the ingenious hunting technique comes in, and it's what makes this snake famous. The spider tail that the snake gets its namesake from is an appendage on the end of its tail that has leg-like frills. These frills are actually elongated scales. This makes it resemble a spider, and it's able to move its tail from side to side in order to make it seem alive. The snake will then use its excellent camouflage to blend into the rock face, and just its tail will be visible, moving around, which attracts any hungry birds looking to eat a spider. The bird will swoop down to attack the tail, and out of nowhere, the very venomous viper will snatch and bite the bird. This hunting technique was beautifully shown in David Attenborough's Seven Worlds One Planet documentary, specifically in the episode on Asia, and I implore you to go and watch it, it is truly remarkable. The bird that gets eaten in that documentary is a species of flycatcher, a rather small insect-eating bird, but anything larger and the snake wouldn't be able to handle it. Snake breeding techniques can vary from species to species, and sadly due to this snake species remoteness and subsequent lack of study, we aren't sure how these ones breed. However, it's most likely they breed like many other snakes do. In most snakes, the male has two appendages called hemipenises, which extend out of the male to fertilise the female. The female snake can actually choose whether or not to become pregnant after this has happened, and some are able to essentially hang on and store the male sperm for whenever they are in the best environment to reproduce. Different snakes have different mating rituals. Some like anacondas are very violent, with the much larger females eating the males afterwards, but we don't know if the spider-tailed horn viper does the same. One thing we can be pretty certain about is that it gives birth to live young. Vipers are rather unique in the snake world, as the majority of them don't lay eggs, and instead are ovoviviparous, meaning they do still produce eggs, but they don't lay them, they let them hatch inside of their body. This offers many benefits, such as better protection for the eggs from predators, and better, more consistent incubation, however it is more taxing upon the mother who has to carry the eggs around with her. We can't be 100% sure these vipers are ovoviviparous, viviparous, as some vipers are not, but because most vipers are, we can assume that these vipers are too. We've been through the biggest adaptation this snake possesses, and sadly, other than their tails, they are really just like most other vipers. So like most other vipers that they were misidentified as other vipers originally. However, vipers still possess interesting adaptations. They are incredibly venomous for defensive purposes, and some vipers, like the gaboon viper, and this viper, have quite short but stocky bodies. The reason for this is most likely because they are ambush predators, and so don't need a lot of maneuverability, but they do need a lot of striking power, so their thick bodies are better suited to this hunting technique. As they have only been discovered relatively recently, we have insufficient data on their populations. 
and so have no real clue how well or badly they're doing. It's unlikely humans are having much of an effect upon them when they live in such harsh conditions, but of course there's always the danger that anthropogenic climate change will make their deserts too hot and dry for them, or more crucially their bird prey, which could result in their extinction. They probably don't have many natural predators. Their camouflage isn't there to protect them from predators, it's so they can ambush birds and be better predators themselves. And being so venomous means if anything did attack them, they'd be able to defend themselves. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learnt something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.